Finally, our tour arrives at Massey Hall, Canada's most hallowed music ground. Every other venue is a stepping stone to here. It's the site of countless legendary live albums, including the greatest jazz concert ever, where Charlie Parker famously performed with a toy saxophone. It is a temple, a site of worship, and is the highest honor for a Canadian musician to perform on its stage. You never really know what you're going to get with venues, but something I do remember about Massey Hall is the depth. And I remember I could sing, like when I was doing soundcheck, even just like singing a cappella with no mic, your voice just like transcends and it just feels like it sort of comes back to you. You can hear the walls, you can hear the windows, you can hear the seats, you can hear the wood, and it presents some challenges because you have to work around the idiosyncratic nuances of the room in the building. The sound kind of wraps around you. It's something about the way that it's shaped, especially when you have the crowd singing back to you. It just feels like the music is sort of all around you and underneath you. It's kind of indescribable. Or not kind of, it is very indescribable. You know, you, you get out there and it's almost like you feel people tapping you on your shoulder, reminding you that you're not alone, reminding you that you're not the first and placing you in this history, this legacy. There are so many albums and artists that are attached to that venue. Most people might think of Neil Young or Charlie Parker. Even if you go back through the history, like Massey kind of has hosted other things like Politicians have spoken there, they've hosted boxing matches there. My association to this room is seeing Gordon Lightfoot on that stage. Rush did a live album there. Bare Naked Ladies played a string of shows there. Buffy St. Marie, Tanya Tagak, Bob Dylan. I performed at Massey Hall for my first tour, which was already, I mean, scary enough, but then performing at such an iconic venue was also, it had an element of like, I don't know, it was, it was very intimidating, but in a good way. I think performing Scars live, especially during that era of my career and my life, was super special because seeing people connect with that song and hearing them sing it back to me, on top of it being in such a beautiful, iconic place, was magical. When we started White Horse, initially it was just going to be this kind of side project and very quickly people took to it and it felt right and we were loving it. So we're like, let's just go with this. This, this feels great. And then like. Three years later, we had booked Massey Hall. And there was a sort of like resounding kind of gasp of incredulity and disbelief that, that we had the audacity to book Massey Hall. And we'd only been a band for a few years and we just had one record. Thank you for being here. And we were not cool about it, you know? Like, <laughs> I think some artists are just like, oh yeah, play Massey Hall. We, I think all of our fans knew like how giddy we were. <laughs> wow, it looks amazing. It's finished. Ah! Yep, still got it. I always described Massey Hall as like playing in someone's living room. I don't know if I would still describe it that way because we just spent the last year playing in our living room. <laughs> and I'm like desperate to play in Massey Hall now. I think of Massey Hall as sort of the grand dame of Canadian music venues. And I feel like she would be really intimidating from the outset and very quickly put you at ease. Because everybody's around you in a, in a kind of a U shape, they're all very close. So you can see and be attentive to everybody in the room. Slightly intimidating when you start, but by the time you get into a groove, it's a magical place. On April 4th, 2018, I had been invited to not only to sing a couple of songs, but to speak on a panel for the AGO in partnership with Massey Hall. And it was really special for me because it was right at the end of this era of iconic artists speaking, performing on this beautiful stage. It was something that had always been a dream of mine. And I got in like right at the, at the very nick of time. For some reason, when you step onto that stage, you're just like, Yes, this is exactly where I need to be <laughs> right now. This feels so right. And I've never felt anything other than that. So my, my pedal board goes here. <laughs> I feel lucky I love you. that we have this and that it is being preserved and protected and celebrated. And I feel very lucky that we are embedded in that history now. That feels pretty incredible. <laughs>